Well, it's January 2022 and the COVID-19 pandemic is continuing to surge. It actually, it never really stopped. Yeah. Uh, so you should probably wear a mask. Yeah. Wear a mask. Nice mask over the nose, under the chin, across the face to, you know, help flatten the curve, uh, protect yourself, protect vulnerable folks, protect your families, you know, all that. Yeah. Wear a mask. Well, as we all know, it's a new year and that means absolutely nothing. So I'd wanted to, for a while, make a work on a mixer project because uh, for Eurorack stuff and the things I do at my synth shelf, so hard to say, wanted to make like a customized mixer. Uh, and so as I try to do in general, start out small, take those first initial steps on a project like that, something I've never done before. So that's what brought us this passive mixer. Passive mixers are cool. I actually have a small one in my setup right now in that they don't require any power. It's literally just pots uh, and audio jacks routing to a main out. Um, so you're just, you're basically just controlling the amount of natural um, audio voltage coming out from whatever instrument you're putting in um, and mixing it out, which is really cool. It gets the job done. Um, and if you've ever listened to any of my synth jams that I do, that's what I'm using to send everything out. So I want to build my own, um, just a simple four by one. Uh, so that's four inputs, one output should be super simple, right? The only issue is literally everything went wrong that could have gone wrong. It was a comedy of errors. And as most things in life are, especially at this point in, in the timeline. So. Obviously I designed up this case here and it's a snap bit case. Snap. And that means two parts. Um, this will be held in with screws, but just to make things easier, it's not right now. Uh, so just like a nice depth thing. And you can see I did a color swap, filament swap to get a striping. The reason why I did the striping was, as you can see here, I've got this kind of like text inlay on the front of the mixer panel uh, so that that would be a nice way to label the inputs and the output. Roman numerals are fun. And my thought here was I could do a color swap on here so that the text would have kind of a nice, it would stick out nicely. And then I could do a color swap on the body of the mixer. So then it would, it would look like it was this kind of striping effect. And apparently I really like, yellow boxes for music tech projects. Cause uh, I realized afterwards it looked very similar to the project I did with Sophie Wong back in August, uh, the button box, but that's okay. Yellow is a nice color. I've come to really like the color yellow. I don't know why I can't explain it, but I have. Now this looks like it'd be a fairly simple 3D prints, um, except for some reason when I was printing the body, uh, after I swapped filament, uh, my spool of the silver gray here got like, um, kind of wrapped up on itself. So it like caused some tension in the extruder. And as a result, it under extruded for a layer before I caught it. It looked fine. I thought it would maybe hold up, but then sure enough, when I put the lid on top of the body, it separated. So I had to pr print this again, which was annoying. Now then, I, you know, I explained I wanted to do this color swap here, uh, and this is actually the one that was an issue. Uh, I get confused with the G-code um, scripts in Kira, because uh, I've switched to Kira as my slicer to use with the Ender 3 printer that I'm using now since my Prusa died. And the one thing about Prusa slicer is it has this really nice visual uh, thing that lets you know where you've put in your color swap. It's kind of built into the slicer. Uh, I was having issues with Prusa Slicer remembering my Creality printer settings. I had to like add it as a printer every time. Um, so that's why I switched to Kira. But then with Kira, like you have um, these plugins and it doesn't give you the visual of where your, your layer change is. And so basically I, I had a change on a layer too late. I should have had it change on a layer earlier. So the first initial layer that did behind this text was yellow. And then there was just one layer of gray. So it wasn't as like vibrant as I liked or as I was expecting it to be. I tried um, putting some Sharpie 
behind it. See if that would work. Yeah. Uh, and it really didn't. And at first I was going to leave it because like you could still see it, but then um, I get kind of persnickety about this kind of stuff. So I printed it again with the right layer this time. The part that was probably the most frustrating about the print failing is I had done prep to make sure that wouldn't happen. I would printed a test panel to fit the potentiometers and the jacks and it worked great. So I'd lured myself into a false sense of security with the print. And then chaos and calamity ensued with the actual circuit. Now, the pinouts of audio jacks can be kind of strange. These are TRS stereo jack. This is a stereo passive mixer. The jacks I'm using, there was no spec sheet. Uh, so I looked at the jacks and they had a numbering one, two, three. Um, so I was thinking that meant TRS tip ring sleeve, which would make three or the sleeve ground. Now, in the back of my little walnut brain, did I think I should use some alligator clips to test before soldering? Yes, yes, the thought did cross my mind, but I'm trying to trust more. Uh, so I, I didn't, and I went with it, and I did the wiring. And now I had um, pitched this as a learn guide, so I'm documenting the build, right? And it has to all be right, okay? So, you know, I solder, it up and I bring it home and when I plug it in I'm just getting constant synth when I push it through and I'm like what is what is this um the jacks are not working at all the main out is kind of working but not really I'm like what is what is going on and then I thought to myself oh my god did I solder the jacks wrong is that what happens so I you know, I did what I thought originally I'd do. I got some alligator clips and I tested it. And do you know that I did? I did. I had the pin out wrong. Um, on these jacks, the pin that is marked one, which is longer, is indeed for ground. And the two on the, the side are the, the what would be the tip in the ring. So it's kind of similar to a, a breadboard headphone jack. If you've ever seen those, the ground's always in the center and then left and right, which is upsetting. Now, if this was just a personal project, it wouldn't really be that big of a deal. Um, since I'm doing point to point wiring to desolder, it's very simple. You just you know, heat up the joint, swap things around. However, it's for a learn guide. So I'm taking pictures of every step. So I desoldered the entire thing and resoldered everything, again taking photos at every step. Now I'm not saying this to complain. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the consequences of an improperly wired jack, a comedy of errors. It makes for an interesting time lapse though, the desoldering. And you know, I, I enjoy soldering. It's a meditative practice for me. So it, it worked out, but Still, can you, can you believe that I did that? So after rewiring the jacks, it all worked great. No issue. We've got a solid black and yellow um, passive mixer now. Um, again, uh, looks like a bumblebee if your brain is normal. Uh, looks like a wasp filter if you're into your accents. So what is my point? My point is I built a passive mixer um, and I made some mistakes along the way and I want to share the mistakes um, because, as is always my mantra, uh, work hard, stay humble, and I humble myself on an almost daily basis, and I just wanted to share that, I guess. Maybe you're having a bad day, and you watch this, and you're like, well, at least I didn't do that. At least I didn't do any of that. That's why I'm here. I'm excited about this Passive Mixer project. I'm excited that in the Learn Guide, I'm going to have a Jack diagram pointing where ground is and where the other things are so that hopefully next time someone gets one of those jacks and they're using it for audio, they know exactly how to wire it. So that's good. And as I said, uh, I wanted to do like a mixer project um, to make a really customized setup in the past. And what I'd love to now expand this out to do is add mute and solo buttons. That's what I would like to work on next. 
And then after that, I'd love to do some aux sense for effects. And then, you know, just kind of build from there. And in my brain, what I'm seeing is a modular open source mixer project where you could basically have PCBs for panels and have it be able to expand and be totally modular. Uh, and I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, and it would start from this. Uh, cause I'd never, I'd never built anything like this before. This is the winter of music tech projects and this is the first one. Uh, so yeah, it started with a comedy of errors. It probably won't be the end of the comedy of errors, but here I am. Link to the learn guide will be down below once it's live. Uh, and until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY.